Hey everyone, Math 106. We're working on section 5.2, part 1 today on U.S. units and unit conversions. Converting units is a really valuable skill because if you're getting supplies, you never know what units are going to be measured in versus what you're going to be using on the job. Let's start with a warm-up. Now, as we saw last time, we're multiplying fractions. You can cancel on top and bottom if you have a matching number. So here the 8's are going to cancel, and those turn into 1's when we cancel them. Now we multiply straight across, 1 times 3 gives us 3 on top, 1 times 1 is 1 on the bottom, and we can simplify that to 3. Second one, we got two matching pairs here, we got a matching pair of 5's, those are gone, matching pair of 9's, those are gone. Turning into 1's, 1's all around. 4 times 1 times 1 gives us 4 on top, 1 times 7 times 1 gives us 7 on the bottom. And the last one, 3 pairs of matches here, pair of 5's, pair of 7's, pair of 2's. We have 2 7's, only 1 on the bottom, so we're only going to cancel 1 of those 7's on top, leaving 1 7 remaining and a 6 on the bottom. 7, 6 for that one. Now in order to convert units, we're going to be using what's known as unity fractions. These are fractions with a value of 1. And this is important because when we multiply by fractions, we don't want to change the value. We only want to change the units. So if you're measuring something and it's 36 inches, well that's 3 feet. It's the same distance, we're just measuring in two different units. Don't want to change the value. So we're going to start off by looking at the table of conversion factors. You can see that in the handout. The conversion factor is a multiplier for converting one unit into another. Now the tables of conversion factors, these are the only conversion factors we're going to be using. So when you refer to units, just refer to those tables and pick out a conversion factor. Don't use any other conversion factors that you might find in another book or online. So we're going to start off by creating some unity fractions using minutes and seconds. And with each conversion factor, there's two different fractions we can create. We can have a, a fraction with minutes on top. So in one minute, that's equivalent to 60 seconds. So we got one minute over 60 seconds. So that's one way to write a unity fraction, since these two things are equal to each other. All right, now we can also flip it over, take the reciprocal, and that's 60 seconds over one minute. And which unity fraction we're going to use will depend on the application, so we'll have to make that choice. Your turn number one, write two unity fractions for inches and feet. So those two unity fractions, since 12 inches equals 1 feet, we got 12 inches over 1 foot or 1 foot over 12 inches. Next up, cups and pints. Well, there's two cups and a pint. So you can write it like that or with the pints on top. Now we're going to use these unity fractions to convert units. First example, we're going to convert 52 ounces into pounds. Let's go through the procedure. Step one, we're going to take the given quantity, 52 ounces, and write it as a fraction over one. Feel free to use abbreviations like OZ for ounces and fraction over one. We can do that because any number can be written over one without changing the value. 52 divided by one is still 52. Now, if the given quantity is a rate, then we're going to include units down here. If it's like miles per hour or something like that, we'd have miles on top, hours on the bottom. But in this case, we don't have rates, so we're just going to write it over one without units in the denominator. Now, let's identify the units we're converting from and to. We're converting from ounces into pounds. So we're going to use two unity fractions for ounces and pounds. We just need to determine which one we're going to use. There are two available. Now there's 16 ounces in a pound, so our unity fraction is going to involve 16 ounces and 1 pound. 
Now the key to setting these up correctly is to make sure that the units we're starting with go on opposite sides of the divisor line. We want to get rid of those units. We don't want those in our final answer. So we're going to cancel those. So that means we have to have 16 ounces in the denominator and one pound up top. And now we have a set of correctly ounces cancels with ounces, just like we did yesterday. The units on top and the bottom, they match, you can cancel them. Now the remaining units are going to be the units of the answer, pounds, and that's exactly what we're looking for. So what we're going to do now is multiply straight across, 52 times 1, 52, 1 times 16 is 16 pounds. And then finally divide it out, and we get 3.25. So 52 pounds, or 52 ounces is the same as 3.25 pounds. Your turn number two, 23.2 feet to yards. Step one, 23.2 feet over one. Now we need a conversion factor between feet and yards. There are three feet and one yard. We should have to write, make sure to write the feet on the bottom. So one yard goes on top. Three feet on the bottom. Now the feet are gonna cancel, leaving us with just yards. Multiplying straight across, 23.2 times 1 gives us 23.2 on top, 1 times 3 gives us 3 on the bottom. And the units are yards. Divide that out, 23.2 divided by 3, we get 7.7. .7. Make sure to include units in the answer, 7.7 .7 yards. Part B. There are two pints in a quart. The two pints will go on the bottom, so it matches with the ones on top. One quart on top. Multiplying straight across, 12.5 times one. One times two is two. Get rid of those pints, and we're left with units of just quarts. That's what we're looking for. Make sure to match here. Dividing that out, that gives us 6.25 quarts. Next example, 8.6 miles to yards. All right, there's our first fraction. Take the initial quantity, put it over one. Now we're converting to yards, so that means we have miles on top, so we're going to want one mile on the bottom. Now there are 1,760 yards in a mile. Multiply that out, we get 15,136 on top. One times one is one on the bottom, so just a one on the bottom, and the miles cancel, so we're left with units of yards. And you can just write that as a number without the fraction, 136 yards. Your turn number three, 5.9 hours into minutes. We got 5.9 hours over 1. Now we're going to multiply by a conversion factor between hours and minutes. Well, there are 60 minutes in one hour. Positions of the hours on the opposite side of hours, those cancel. 
Now we're going to multiply 5.9 times 60. We get 354. And it's going to be a fraction over 1, so we can just uh, go right on to 354 minutes. Part B, 7.2 cups to fluid ounces. Uh, it's easy to get these confused. Between these and the ounces we used over here for pounds, these are two different quantities. This is the quantity of volume. So, 7.2 cups is our initial quantity over 1. And now the conversion factor between fluid ounces and cups is 8 fluid ounces in 1 cup. Position these so cups are on top, cups are on the bottom. We're going to cancel those cups, leaving just fluid ounces in our final answer, and that's what we want. We'll do 7.2 times 8. We get 57.6, and this will be over 1, so we don't have to write it. Fluid ounces. All right, so now we're going back to the introduction. We're going to determine the number of gallons of water to add to a quick read mix that requires three quarts of water. So we're starting with three quarts. We've got to figure out how many gallons this is. So we're going to multiply the, by the conversion factor. If you look in the table, four quarts is one gallon. So we're going to put the four quarts on the bottom from one gallon on top. So it gives us three times one on top, one times four on the bottom. So three quarters. The quarts cancel. Gallons. So we need three quarters of a gallon. So fill that bucket up about three quarters of the way. And you can also write that as 0.75 if you prefer. So each of the conversions we've done so far have been connecting uh, one unit measure to another that's directly in the table with a conversion factor. But it's not always the case. Sometimes we're going to convert from units that don't have a direct conversion factor from one to the other. In that, that case, we're going to need to use more than one conversion factor. And yeah, that means more than one fraction. So, for example, for we're converting 50,000 ounces to tons. So we'll start just like we did before. Take the starting value, 50,000 ounces, put it over 1. And notice there is no conversion factor that goes directly from ounces to tons. So we're going to need to trace a path through the conversion factors from ounces to tons. And it's going to go through a middle measurement. 
So we can go from ounces to pounds. There's a conversion factor for that. And then there's another conversion factor from pounds to tons. So those will be our two conversion factors. So first thing is ounces to pounds, and now there's 16 ounces in the pound. And now if we cancel units, the ounces here are going to cancel, leaving us with just pounds. Right, so now we need to go to pounds to tons. The conversion factor there is 2,000 pounds in one ton. And now we trace a path from ounces to pounds to tons. We have pounds on top, pounds on the bottom. Those are going to cancel, leaving us with just tons. Sometimes getting the fractions right can take a few tries, so just be aware of that. Now we're going to multiply straight across these fractions, just like we do for any other fraction. We've got 50,000 times 1 times 1. So that gives us 50,000 on top. Make sure you write the, uh, to show work, make sure you're writing this fraction with the numbers in there. So we're going to do 16 times 2,000, so that is 32,000. Now all the units are gone except for tons, so the units down here are tons. Then divide this out, 50,000 divided by 32,000 gives us 1.5625. I'm just going to round that to 1.6 tons. Your turn number four. Part A, we're going to convert 82,400 inches to miles. There are a couple different ways we can do this. There are conversion factors from inches to yards, and then we can do yards to miles. Or we can do inches to feet and feet to miles. So I'm going to do feet. All right, we got 12 inches, one foot, and then we're going to do conversion from feet to miles. So we're going inches to feet to miles. And there are 5,280 feet in a mile. Now we're going to multiply straight across, 82,400 times 1 times 1. That's 82,400. And then we're going to do 12 times 5,280. And get 63,360. All right, inches cancel, feet cancel, leaving just miles. Divide those out and round 1.3 miles. Part B, eight fluid ounces to teaspoons. So we're going to need two conversion factors. We're going to go ahead and set up two fractions. And now the conversion factors are we can go fluid ounces to tablespoons, and then tablespoons to teaspoons. Two jumps there. Now there are two tablespoons in a fluid ounce, and the symbol for tablespoons is a capital T. So fluid ounces on top, so we need fluid ounces on bottom here. All right, now we're going to do tablespoons to teaspoons. So the tablespoons to cancel here are going to have to go on the bottom. So then there are two tablespoons. Oh, wait, that backwards. There are two teaspoons. No, there are three teaspoons. I'm thinking of tablespoons. Three teaspoons. Now small t for teaspoon and one tablespoon. Okay, so now we're going to do multiply 8 times 2 times 3. 
One's on the bottom. Fluid ounces cancel. Tablespoons cancel, leaving just teaspoons. So 48 teaspoons. Rates can also be converted with this method. So in example 5, we're going to go 3.8 feet per second to inches per second. All right, so there's our initial quantity, 3.8 feet per second. So write that as feet on top, seconds on the bottom. Remember, per means the divisor line, means division. And now we need to convert one of the units because our ending units are uh, inches per second. So we're going to keep these same units on the bottom. So we do not need to convert those. We're only going to convert the feet. So when I set up this, Fraction, I'm going to make sure to put the feet on the bottom. So we're going feet to inches, so one foot is 12 inches. Then we can multiply straight across, 3.8 times 12 gives us 45.6. And that's going to be over 1, so we don't have to write that. But the units are going to remain in fraction form. Uh, feet cancel, so we're going to get rid of those. We have inches on top, so put the inches on top of the unit fraction here, and seconds on the bottom. So that's 45.6 inches per second. Or you can write it out in words. Inches per second. Root turn number five, we're going to convert. 0.25 pounds per foot to ounces per foot. So they're both per foot, so we're not going to change the feet. We're just going to change pounds to ounces. So pounds are on top, so we need pounds on the bottom, so those will cancel. And 16 ounces is the conversion on top. All right, get rid of those. Now we'll do 0 0.25 times 16, that's 4. 1 times 1 is 1 on the bottom. And we're left with ounces and feet. Ounces over feet. So that is 4. Ounces per foot. Now with some rate problems, both the top and the bottom have to be converted, so that's going to require at least two unit fractions. 34 inches per second to feet per minute. So we're going from inches per second to feet per minute. So inches will be converted into feet. So let's do that first. 12 inches, one foot. So one conversion factor to convert the top unit, one conversion factor to convert the bottom unit. The seconds are going to minutes. So now we're going to write this fraction so that the seconds are on top so that these will cancel. Always do opposites. So 60 seconds. One minute. So let's cancel some units here. Inches on top, inches on bottom, those cancel. Seconds on top, seconds on the bottom, those cancel. We're left with feet on top, minutes on the bottom, that's feet per minute. It's exactly what we're looking for. So we know we've set this up correctly. Make sure you do that check. Multiply and cross, 34 times 60 times 1, that gives us 2,040. 
units are feet. On the bottom, 1 times 12 times 1, so that's 12 minutes. Lastly, we're going to divide 2040 divided by 12, and that is 170. So 170 feet over minute. 170 feet per minute. Your trick number six. Convert 8.34 pounds per gallon to ounces per fluid ounce. First thing, pounds to ounces. And it doesn't matter which order you're doing, because multiplication is commutative, meaning we can change the order. We could do gallons first if we wanted to. Does matter. One pound is 16 ounces. Now we're going to convert gallons to fluid ounces. And the conversion factor there is one gallon is equal to 128 fluid ounces. So the gallon has to go on top so that that cancels. Hundred twenty eight fluid ounces. So pounds on top, pounds on the bottom, those cancel. Gallons on top, gallons on the bottom, those cancel. We get ounces over fluid ounces, and that's the units we're looking for. So on top, we're going to multiply eight point three four times sixteen times one, and we get hundred thirty three three point four four. And those units are the units on top, which are ounces. And on the bottom, 1 times 1 times 128. Dividing those out, 133.44 divided by 122 is 1.04. So 1.04 ounces per fluid ounce. So that's how much a, a fluid ounce weighs, 1.04 ounces. As it turns out, this is water. Water weighs 8.34 pounds per gallon. And 1.04 ounces per fluid ounce. Part B, convert 34.8 quarts per day to fluid ounces per hour. All right, so we're at the initial quantity, 34.8 quarts per day. Now we want quarts to fluid ounces. So quarts are going to go on the bottom so that those cancel. And there are 32 fluid ounces in one quart. And we want to find out fluid ounces per hour. So we're going to go days to hours. So days on the bottom, so days go on top, one day. And 24 hours. Multiply straight across. 34.8 times 32, we get 1113.6. And units, after we do our cancellations, quarts go away, uh, days go away. We got fluid ounces on top. And on the bottom, 1 times 1 times 24. Hours, divide that out, 
and we get 46.4. fluid ounces per hour. So this takes a little practice, but this is a really great skill to have. It not only allows us to begin a conversion, but we're actually going to be able to solve word problems without being given the formula. And doing that is called doing dimensional analysis. Have a great day, everyone.